It's time for another season of the world's best show, RuPaul's Drag Race. This time, All Stars 3. What makes me qualified to review RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars? Hmm. Well, I was there when Tammy Brown used RuPaul's exit on her first runway presentation. I was there when workroom entrances used to be organic and there were no catchphrases. I was there when Stacey Lane Matthews walked into the workroom dressed for the church picnic. I was there when Fifi O'Hara was the first orange queen before Coco Montrese. I was there for the heartbreaking lip sync between Raven and Jujube. I am a full drag race nerd. Yes, nerd. Full of random facts, moments, and quotes from the show. There can be no greater RuPaul's Drag Race nerd slash scholar than I. So with that said, let's chat. So when evaluating the queens, I'm going to be thinking about their performance on their seasons and from what I've seen from them since. Um, I was, you know, re-watching one of Alaska's interviews um, with uh, Johnny McGovern on Hey Queen. And, and what she said, watching it again, you know, I, I picked up on something. Being good at drag doesn't mean you're good at drag race. If we think about some of the biggest names in drag that have been on drag race, we think about Roxy Andrews, who in the drag community is viewed as completely flawless. But on drag race, for all stars too, didn't really play the game as well as she did in the first in her first appearance on drag race. And so just because someone's good at drag or is great at drag doesn't mean they're gonna be great at drag race because it's a completely different beast. And the same is true, vice versa. Um, or maybe it was Tracy Mattel. I can't remember. Either way, it was someone, it was one of them. I follow many of them on social media, so there are some things about them that I'm aware of, and there are some things I don't know. Um, and that's where I'm gonna need your help. If you know of something that I haven't thought about, uh, go ahead and comment, like, and subscribe to Alex Chats, and join the conversation. Also, this is a non-spoiler page. I know some of you uh, uh, people that like to go on Reddit and love to talk and spoil stuff, you know, I'm, I'm not really here for that. I love to watch the show as a spectator. I love to watch and not know what's going, what's going to happen. Um, so I have stayed away uh, from spoilers uh, for this All-Star season. And I'm staying away from spoilers for the future because spoilers kind of ruined season nine for me a little bit. You know, the mask gate thing, I learned about three weeks before it actually happened. And it wasn't as dramatic for me had I not known. Well, no, it was still, it was still very dramatic, actually. Um, and then the fact that Sasha and Peppermint were both uh, in the top two at the finale, something that was ruined because of Reddit. So I don't go on Reddit. And if you go on Reddit, that's perfectly fine. This is America. Do what you want to do. Just don't bring the spoilers to my page. Thank you. Mean it. Next. I'm going to start in no particular order, although I think it might be... Yeah, no, it's in no particular order. Um, have my notes here. Always going to have my notes just because I can't remember things. That's not true. I remember a lot of things. I'm always going to have my notes just because I want to make sure I don't forget things. That sounds better. Right. Um, so first, Ben de la Creme. Ben de la Creme placed fifth in her season of RuPaul's Drag Race, which is RuPaul's Drag Race season six. Uh, she placed fifth to Bianca Del Rio, Courtney Actor, Dora Delano, and Darian Lake. She was one of my top choices for the top three of that season. I remember watching Meet the Queens, and I remember... Uh, going through all the queens I thought were going to make it pretty far. Um, and if I recall correctly, my top three choices were Courtney Act, Darian Lake, and Ben De La Creme, just based off of what I saw in the promos. Um, because De La has some, there's something about her energy, there's something about her spirit uh, when you first see the character that, you know, of Ben De La Creme that, you, that you're that you drawn to, that you find engaging, that you find funny. And on the show uh, as a whole, she was consistently um, really good, uh, especially at the beginning. She had a really good stride going on, won two challenges out the gate. Um, well, one challenge out the gate and then another challenge. A sna the Snatch Game Challenge was the, her second win. Um, and although she uh, had a scare about going home the first time and then eventually did go home, she was a, still a great, solid competitor. I even loved... Not loved. I really enjoyed her ball looks for the glitter ball. She got a lot of hate from it, especially on that last look, but I rather enjoyed it myself, and so I'm interested to see what she's going to bring back here. She, 
I'm going to hold that. Next is Milk. Milk placed, I think, was it ninth on season six with Dela. Um, and Milk as a queen on Drag Race wasn't the best. She wasn't the funniest. Um, her looks were stellar up until the last look. And the last look was just pretty. Um, I think for Milk, one of the things I'm going to be looking for is whenever she does whatever look she's going to do, is it going to be executed with the same passion and zeal as every look that came before it. Um, Santina said something on the runway when she was being assessed before she went home. She says that he said the detail that you take when you put a Pinocchio nose on should be the same detail you have when you do uh, looks that are outside of your general club kid aesthetic. Um, and I agree with, if you're going to do something different, do it to the same level that you did everything else. Um, so that everyone knows that you're about that you're serious about your craft, that regardless of what style or genre or niche of drag you might be doing, um, you are still taking your job that seriously or as seriously. But I'm a, I know she's going to bring some great looks to the runway. I hope she's going to bring some great looks to the runway. I hope all of them do. Um, but at the same time, I'm expecting to see it. I'm hoping to see some growth because she wasn't that funny, um, and. Uh, Although, well, that's not true. See, here's the thing about Milk. She was funny sometimes, and then sometimes when she was asked to be funny, she wasn't funny. When she wasn't asked to be funny, well, that's not even true, because the reading challenge, she was good. I don't know. Milk is a mixed bag. Milk is a mixed bag only because her performance on, on Drag Race was comparatively short to some of the others on this list. Um, but I'm expecting Milk to do pretty well, and I want to see what more she has to bring. Next, Shangela. Shangela Girl is here for season three. The only contestant so far to participate in three seasons, three different seasons of Drag Race. Um, she came in season two, left first episode after a phenomenal lip sync with her and Sahara Davenport, RIP. Um, then she came in in season three, almost went home again to Venus Delight in the first episode, but then made it all the way to top five, the original top five, because... That was also the year that Carmen came back, which nobody wants to repeat. Either way, she came back and made it to top five um, and then eventually went home. And now she's back for All Stars 3. I don't think it was possible for us to get through any All Star season of RuPaul's Drag Race without the All Star. Shangela is the Drag Race All Star. She continues to come back after being invited time after time. And every time she comes back to the screen, we see a change, we see growth, we see something different. And we see a fighter in Shangela that uh, we haven't seen on the show to that same caliber and that same level of fighting um, for that time. And I'm not talking about like uh, uh, catty backstage, you know, he says, she said fights. I'm talking about the fighting to prove not only to Rue, but to the country that you are worth it. Um, and I think Shangela has the most to prove um, and the most to lose because this is her third time on the show, her third time being invited back by RuPaul himself. And so Shangela has the most to prove. And I think Shangela do it very well. Thorgy Thor. So going into season eight, I didn't uh, feature Thorgy too much. After the first challenge where they had to redo the cake challenge, some people, oh, where they had to reduce old challenges, her cake outfit was the first statement that she made. And it was like a red velvet, you know, inspired uh, outfit. Um, and I didn't mind it. Um, it wasn't bad. It wasn't great. I didn't mind it. Going forward, she continued to step up her game. Um, in the lip sync, big, uh, Bitch Perfect lip sync, it was a challenge. That was really great. Um, and then her performance as Cookie in um, uh, Ruko's, <laughs> Ruko's Empire, I think was really good. Um, her looks have always been a mixed bag. I'm not opposed to a lot. I mean, if we're, if we're talking about drag here, drag is extra. If you have a lot of extra going on, you have a lot of extra happening, and you're able to work it, I'm here for it. With Jocelyn Fox, for example, she is the queen of queens when it comes to extra. Always throw on 55 more. Jocelyn Fox, Alex, uh, Thorgy Thor, uh, Alexis Mateo, Alyssa Edwards, all do the most when it comes to piling stuff on. Um, and that's okay because they it's part of their setting, it's part of what they do, it's part of uh, who they are and what makes us love them. Um, I think for Thorgy, it didn't always make sense. And I'm interested to, I, I'm interested to see if her looks have become consistently cohesive. Here or there, yes, but consistently is it going to bring something that I'm going to enjoy. Um, I think she's going to bring some... Uh, 
some interesting something interesting to the show. But I don't expect to see her. I don't. I don't expect to see her go that far. Um, Kennedy Davenport. Kennedy Davenport is a favorite for some people, and she's very polarizing. For some people, they love her. Some people, they can't stand her. I actually love Kennedy Davenport. <laughs> sorry, sorry about it. Um, and I love her for the things that pe that she doesn't get enough attention. For. Well. Some of the things I love her for are the things that she doesn't get enough attention for. One of the things I love her for the most is the fact that she is upfront about being upfront. She's going to tell you what she thinks. She's going to make sure that you know that she's going to tell you what she thinks before she tells you. And I, I recognize that in her. I see that, you know, kind of the same for me sometimes, you know, saying more than I should say at certain times. <laughs> kind of share that similarity. And so I appreciate that. But I also love... If I'm going to go to a drag show, I want to see a lip sync performance. And Kennedy Davenport will give me a full show. And that's what I want to see. If they bring back the lip sync for your legacy, I want Kennedy to win challenges. Not because I want her to win, because she's not one of my choices to win, but I want to see her perform. Nobody can, can't say, like, there's nobody that can say that they don't want to see that. Um... And I think she'll, I think as benefit for the show, she would give me that. I'm actually going to switch the order because Chi Chi Devane is also in that that category. Chi Chi's also, uh, Chi Chi is not as polarizing as Kennedy. A lot of people generally love Chi Chi. I enjoy Chi Chi. I don't necessarily uh, think that she should have uh, been on All Stars 3, but that's just my personal opinion. But if we're going to talk about performances... I want one of the, I want those two to win Kennedy and Chi Chi to win challenges um, and to win the same challenge and lip sync for their legacy or lip sync for their lives because that would be even more dramatic. Love the drama, love the drama. Um, so talking about Chi Chi, Chi Chi in season eight, um, she showed out in Bitch Perfect where she you know uh, was twerking and lip syncing and rolling her neck upside down um, during the acapella thing. But after that, she uh, had some high moments. I think one of the other high moments was the ball when she came out, especially in her paper look, which was gorgeous. Outside of that, though, I wasn't really that big of a fan of Chi Chi on the show. It's good to see that she's back. It's good to see that she has elevated her style of drag, mainly because money will help you do that. And listen, money will help you get a lot of things together. You know, they say money can't buy happiness, but it can definitely buy some peace of mind. And I think that's what Chi Chi's bringing into the competition now. She's bringing more of a peace of mind because she doesn't have to worry about her future after this. She knows that she'll have a career. Now she can play the game. And it'll be interesting to see what she does with that. Um, next, Aja. If you couldn't tell by my reaction, I am not expecting that much from Aja. I get people love her. I was thrown off because at the beginning of season nine, people lauded Aja. Before she even before she even walked into the workroom, people said, she's the queen to beat. And I kept an open mind. I was like, I don't know any of these queens. So sure, she just might be the queen to beat. And then I saw her walk into the workroom and Trinity made a statement saying, uh, does she know what she looks like? Because if not, I have to tell her. And I was thinking the exact same thing. The Aja that we saw was not the Aja that we were promised. And so it made me very lukewarm. And so hopefully on All Stars, she gets me excited to see her as a performer. Because even as a performer, yeah, she won the lip sync for your life against Kamora Black. But honestly, a dying turtle on a treadmill could could have beaten Kamora Black in that lip sync because she didn't know the words and she was pretty bad, right? Not to say no no shade, no shade to Kamora or her fans, but that lip sync was not the best. And so I wasn't uh, too uh, gagged over that lip sync because it was like, mm, you're kind of fighting a crash test dummy. So no need to really get excited. And then her next lip sync, she went home against Nina Bonina Brown. So mm, not really that engaged with her. Now I've seen stuff outside of Drag Race, which I really enjoy. I've seen her lip sync performances outside of Drag Race. I've seen looks that she's done outside of Drag Race, um, unfacetuned, unfiltered looks. Um, and and so it's, I'm interested to see the Aja that we get for All Stars 3, although I don't expect her to go that far. Next, Morgan McMichaels. Morgan McMichaels is about to be the Tatiana of this season. And not only because, not just because she comes through season two, but because she's been away for so long from the uh, from the minds of the younger Drag Race fans and the new Drag Race fans. Younger in terms of age and in terms of 
tenure watching the show. Um, I remember Morgan from season two. Season two was the first season that I watched, like all the way through from uh, finale, from premiere to finale. Uh, season two was the season that I came in on. And I remember Morgan doing really well and making it to the bride challenge and getting kicked off by Sahara Davenport during that lip sync. Um, and uh, season two was a different show. RuPaul's Drag Race season two was a, just a different show. And so it's going to be interesting to see what Morgan brings to it uh, years later um, in this generation and age of RuPaul's Drag Race on TV. It's a different show, completely different format. Well, different format in different sections and different ways. Um, uh, and a completely different fan base, an evolved fan base. Um, and so I'm, interested, I'm, I'm grateful to see that... Uh, She's an elder queen from the pantheon of RuPaul's Drag Race that not only gives a second opportunity to show the world who she is, but um, to also compete in a different way. Um, because you, of course, change from year to year, but especially as a competitor on this show and seeing so many uh, girls that you either work with or that you've trained themselves, you've trained yourself and you've given opportunities to come to the show and do uh, and be very successful uh, off of the legacy that you helped to lay. It's gonna be interesting to see how she, you know, then takes that opportunity. Um, last is everyone's, most people's favorite to win, Trixie Mattel. And this is why I say this. Uh, looking back at All Stars 1, when I looked at the cast, I had no idea who would win because you just didn't know. All Stars 1 was such an eclectic, was the first time it had ever happened. It was such an eclectic group of people that you just did not know. Um, going into All Stars 2, uh, my immediate thought was Alaska's, Alaska's going to win because Alaska had been the most visible and the most the most visible uh, since she had left of all the cast and seemed to be doing and following in the trajectory that she had left the show on and that RuPaul asks the winners to to you know to kind of take on that mantle. Um, and Alaska seemed at the beginning of All Stars 2 like she was doing that. That's where Trixie kind of is now. I mean, Trixie and Katya are the only two to have their own TV show on cable TV. I mean, granted, it's like Vice Land, you have to like buy the channel or whatever. But no other drag race queen, no other drag queen besides RuPaul really has that. And um, and, and so it's it's pretty, pretty incredible to see, you know, that she's been able to take her career there. Will that translate to All Stars 3? We'll see. Um, I'm always been a fan of the, uh, of Trixie's paint. I've always been a fan of Trixie's aesthetic. I've not been that big of a fan of the way that she performs as a lip synker, um, gen like aesthetically, but the concepts of her performances I've always been a fan, I've been a fan of since I uh, started hearing about her. Um, and so we are going to see if that actually translates. Here are my top three. Um, Shangela, Dela, Trixie. Shangela, Benda La Creme, Trixie Mattel. That is my prediction for the top three. Uh, do you agree with my picks? Uh, are there any surprises you think I should be prepared for? Do you think someone else might sneak into the top three? Who are your choices for the top three of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars 3? Let me know by liking, commenting, and subscribing. Go ahead. Right now. Right beneath. Go ahead and do it. Did you enjoy the video? I hope you did. If so, go ahead and subscribe to Alex Chats. And don't forget to check out some other great content right here.